It's a few minutes, few minutes past 10 uh, Central European time, so I think it's a good moment to start today's webinar. My name is Patrick Lange, and my job today is to lead and support the presenters uh, in the webinar. The subject of the webinar is nano encapsulation for drug delivery. Uh, dear presenters, you can start your video, you can start your audio, uh, and we can say hello to all our audience. Dear participants, can you see us? Can you hear us? You can just put it in the question box, yes, if, if you can hear us, if you, if you can see. Booking, booking okay, I think we can. I think we can start. The first thing uh, I would like to introduce is uh, is a panel. The control panel. You as a, as a participants can see. As you see, there are two options: audio, which is uh, I think not necessary. If you hear us, that's everything is fine. And the question panel. During the webinar, you can put questions uh, to our presenters. At the end of uh, the webinar, we we're going to to have a Q and A session. So there's gonna be option to to hear the answers. If there will be lots of answers, we will send you uh, answers for your questions di directly to you by email. What's going on? What is going on on today's webinar? So the introduction will be made uh, by Aurelie Demon. Uh, then uh, Karin Carligano Katan will say about new nano delivery system uh, for hydrophilic macromolecules using BKB90 nanospray drayer. Then Kaliash Petkar will say about, about protein and trap solid nano in nanoparticles, also by nanospray draining, which is main uh, subject of the webinar. And at the, at the end of, of this part, Professor, Professor Simon Benita will say about solid nano in nanoparticles for encapsulation of hydrophilic macromolecules. And then at the end, there's gonna be a Q&A session. During the webinar, I'll start some short uh, questionnaires, so short poll. Uh, and I would like you to to answer. It's going to take about one or two minutes. Uh, our presenters are Professor Simon Benita uh, and his former director and member of the Institute for Drug Research at the School of Pharmacy, Faculty of Medicine at the Hebrew, Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Uh, his research is focused on polymeric nano and micro particulate and lipid-based drug delivery. Uh, he's a very creative pen person uh, because he has been used, used 16 patents and 12 patents application. We also have Dr. Kalish Petkar. Uh, he is currently postdoctor researcher in Professor Simon's Benitas laboratory. Uh, he, in this nano drug delivery system at the same institute, uh, for drug research at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Uh, we also have Karin carligano Katnan. Uh, Karin also works uh, in the same team of Professor Benita, uh, and he's an expert with Biki Nano Sprite Rayer. Uh, and who will start the webinar uh, is already Dimon. Uh, she works with, with Biki since 2016. And she's also an expert with uh, B90 oh, of just sprite drink in general. So uh, this is the beginning, and uh, this is the moment already for you uh, just just to start the the introduction to the webinar. Uh, if you want to say some words as a hello to our um, participants, just feel free to say. Oh, which country, which city are you actually at that moment? I'm in, in south of Poland, in Central Europe, south of Poland, in Krakow. How about you? Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Aurelie. I'm currently in Flaville in Switzerland, in Büchi headquarters. So I will start this presentation with a short introduction. 
and then I will let Professor Benita and his team talk about their research. So we're really looking forward for this webinar and we hope we, you enjoy it. Okay, uh, I'm Simon Benita and we are located in my office in Jerusalem from where we are presenting the short presentations of today made with a nano spray dryer of Gucci. That's and right. surrounded yeah. by Dr. Kayla Specta and Karine, uh, uh, of course, Kagidano from my left, right side. All right, that's great. So I think we're ready to start. So please close our camera and microphone. Uh, all, uh, all the audience is just uh, now for orally. Uh, we will see in a few minutes after orally will finish. everybody uh, welcome to the nano world it's our second webinar about nano spray drying now and today I will present you the Bushi solution for the benefit of the nano spray dryer B90 HP then professor Simon Benita and his team will give you an overview of the research they perform with the nano spray dryer B90 and we will go to the Q&A session So here you can see uh, our portfolio for spray drying and encapsulation, and also our new machine, the Lyo Vapor, which is a freeze dryer. So with our spray drying and encapsulation unit plus the Lyo Vapor, we have quite a wide range of formulation machines, and we can produce particles from 200 nanometer up to 4 millimeter, and also small and particle with the with the Lyo vapor so it's our last machine here in the Bushi portfolio. Uh, our spray drying unit we have two of them the mini spray dryer B290 and the nano spray dryer B90 HP. They don't work on the same principle so the mini spray dryer B290 it's a normal conventional spray dryer which collect particles through a cyclone we have three different no uh, nozzle options with this machine, the two fluid nozzle, the three fluid nozzle, and the ultrasonic nozzle. Today, we will focus on the nano spray dryer B90 HP. This is a machine uh, that can produce particle from one to two micrometer down to 200 nanometer. It works uh, with an ultrasonic nebulizer and it's collecting the particle through an electrostatic particle collector. So this is allowing us to collect really small particles. Such small particles cannot be collected by a cyclone, so we really need this electrostatic particle collector. So what did we do between the nano spray dryer B90 to the nano spray dryer B90 HP? We did a few modifications. So we changed the nebulizer. We produced new nebulizer that you can see on the top left picture. Uh, we redesigned the spray head in order to improve the process, to increase the throughput, and to give the customer a more friendly experience. And we also developed new function in this nano spray dryer B90 HP. These new, new functions, we can see them here. So we have a new three size, small, medium, and large. We redesigned the spray head, so it is much more easy to assemble and to clean the spray head now. We added an auto-stop function, 
So the instrument can be run without supervision and it will stop when the sample is empty. And now we can tune the pump, the spray and the frequency to optimize the process to a maximum. We also have a record software delivered with the machine and it's compatible with both version of the nano spray dryer. So whether you have a B90 or B90 HP, you can use this record software. The nano spray dryer B90 or B90 HP can be used in a wide range of application, mainly for the food industry, drug delivery system, or the chemical industry. Uh, much of the literature focus on the biological and former samples. However, there is quite a few interesting applications of the nano spray dryer B90 HP in the chemical and in the food industry sector. We estimate that more or less 15% of the application are done in the chemical sector, 5% in the food, and the rest is mostly pharma. Uh, I will review a few of these applications. So I will start with the food application. Uh, it's still in a nascent stage and still needs to be expanding. Uh, we can use the nano spray dryer successfully with a variety of representative polymeric wool. Those wool are, some of those wool are here on the slide. So wool so, such as alginate, whey protein, starch, arabingum, PVA, maltodextrin have all been successfully spray dried with our machine. And we will it can be used for quite a variety of really interested, uh, interesting application. Uh, for example, they did some spray drying of salt for ch cheese salty crackers. Um, they were analyzing the sensory effect of using this spray dry salt instead of normal salt. And they realized that using nano spray dried salt on the cracker gave uh, quite a preference to the uh, testing panel. So they like those crackers better than the one with normal salt. So the study concluded that maybe by reducing the, salt, the size of the salt grain, we would be able to reduce the sodium intake into people between 25 and 50 percent. Another really interesting application is in food was the encapsulation of a nano emulsion of vitamin E acetate. Um, this was successfully done with the nano spray dryer. It didn't damage the food ingredient. And the study showed that the nano emulsion could be preserved through this way of spray drying. Uh, food applications have quite a good potential in the future for the dairy and the food in the dairy industry and the food industry. Uh, for example, in the encapsulation of vitamin, flavor, lipids, and a few other products. Um, we could see through the different applications that were done that it's suitable for various solutions such as emulsion, suspension, heat sensitive material, biological products, and so on. Uh, it is expected in the future that other food related encapsulation applications would follow. Um, and the result from the development of application in pharma and dr drug delivery would, go, would give new clue to researchers for food application. Uh, for the chemical application, well, although most of the literature focus on biosample, there is quite interesting application in the material sector mainly in the ceramic sector to produce a uh, battery for, for the battery industry. We could also find uh, interesting applica application in particle agglomeration. I added these as chemical application. Um, so you can also find good uh, interesting application for agglomeration of particles. For example, some research group were agglomerating particles to supplement them for algae culture or to use them as catalytes for enzyme reaction or to produce particles with micro, uh, antimicrobial activity due to the really small size of particle that we can produce with this machine. But then the main sector of application of the nano spray dryer B90 remains drug delivery and pharmaceutical application. 
uh, in this sector, there is uh, a few applications that can be spread into four main categories. So we could use it to spray dry excipient. We could use it to spray dry pure drug and to convert them into dry nano powder. Or we could use them to do nano encapsulation of drug in order to reduce the, so the size of the particle to increase the specific surface area and therefore to increase the absorption rate and give the drug a higher bioavailability. Uh, the last category would be nano englobing and nano suspension. So we would be able to englobe nano suspension into a nano composite particle. The application that is done with those uh, four categories is mainly to administer the drug into a few different delivery routes. Among them, uh, the very interesting one are the intravenous pulmo and pulmonary uh, delivery route, because since we can produce really, really small particle, we could then inject them or deliver them directly into the lungs. Uh, the materials that are used mainly in pharmaceuticals and drug delivery are all the bio, are all biopolymer with a good bioavailability. For example, one of the main uh, used biomaterial would be PLGA because it's very well, it has a very well established biocompatibility and biodegradability. Uh, since we did some change between the B90 and the B90 HP, uh, you could ask yourself the question, are all those applications that were made with the old B90 feasible with the new machine? Because obviously the machine was launched in April, so all those applications were probably, some of those applications that I just reviewed with you were just developed before the launch of the B90 HP. So we did some comparison and some research here in Buchi, and we spread right a few raw material that are commonly used in all those industries to do a comparison of the results and to see if the new machine would give comparable results. What we could conclude is that by upgrading the system from B90 to B90HP, uh, the reproducibility is ensured regarding particle size and morphology. However, the throughput is increased. So it's only beneficial for you to go from B90 to B90HP now. Uh, with the nano spray dryer B90HP, uh, polymers such as BSA or PLGA could be successfully spray dried to produce really small particles from a few hundred of nanometer to a few millimeter, a few micrometer. And we realized that the result that we obtained could be comparable to the result obtained in previous paper um, in the in research re well were similar to research results that were developed with the B90. We also tried to spray dry chitosan in order to see how small we could be by spray drying with our unit. And in this quick test, we managed to get particle of 56 nanometer with a throughput of 25.6 milliliter per hour. In order to get such small particle, we had to dilute the solution quite a lot, but there is potential to really, really reduce those particles by using the nano spray dryer B90HP. So I'm now finished by, with reviewing your the nano spray dryer B90HP and by showing you the potential application that you can have with it. Professor Benita will develop a bit more the drug delivery part of the nano spray dry, of the possibility for the nano spray dry B90 HP. I hope you will enjoy his presentation and I talk to you later. Thank you very much, Aurelie. Uh, I invite uh, another person. So if you are ready, please start your video now I'll give you the
presentation rights. All right. Okay. Yeah, um, now you can start sharing your desktop and start sharing the presentation. Is it sharing? Yeah. Yeah. On my screen. Okay. Yes. No, presentation. Presentation. Yeah. All we need is just to start presentation and we can. <laughs> okay. That's perfect. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Karin. And I'm an MSc student in Professor Simon Benito's lab. My project focused on new nano delivery system for hydrophilic macromolecules using the Bushi B90 nano spray dryer. Uh, why is it not going down? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So the hydrophilic macromolecules I used were antisense oligonucleotides and siRNA, and maybe I will refer to them as the oligonucleotides or oligo further in my presentation. They both act on mRNA in a sequence specific manner and can potentially treat almost any genetic disorder. Despite their potential, they suffer from many problems such as poor membrane permeability, from high sensitivity to environmental conditions like pH, heat, and enzymatic degradation, from rapid clearance through the kidneys and short biological half-life, and from toxicities at high doses. Chemical modifications to the backbone overall were not over a were not able to overcome these disadvantages when administered systemically. And remember this point, that leads to the need in delivery system development. If you will look, you will see that most of the drugs containing these molecules that are currently under clinical trials uh, for systemic delivery use delivery system. adequate nano delivery system has the potential to overcome all of the listed drawbacks. Why nano? Because nano uh, has advantages over microcarriers in pharmacokinetic profile, in drug efficacy, in cell penetration, and in targeting. Although there are currently many developments in nano delivery system for these molecules, the number of approved one is scarce. Therefore, new nano delivery system, double nano capsules, were produced in our lab. Here you can see a general scheme of the production process, but I won't get into specific details. Basically, um, you can see in the figure on the right, what we want to do is to cover the sensitive molecules, the oligonucleotide, into two lines of protection. The first line of protection is achieved by loading the oligonucleotide into human serum albumin nanoparticles. And the second line is achieved by encapsulating these nanoparticles into polymeric nanocapsules composed of the biocompatible and biodegradable PLGA and pegylated PLGA. After the double nanocapsules are produced, they are spray dried via the Buchi B90 to receive a dry powder. The desired properties we want from our double nanocapsules are submicron sizes suitable for IV administration since most of the diseases cannot be treated topically. That means we need at least 80% of total particle population to be under one micron. We want them to be biocompatible and biodegradable, and that is why we use the materials we use, to be easily redispersed before injection without losing the oligoactivity. We want sustained release and prolonged systemic half-life due to the drawbacks I listed before. 
and the long storage and shelf life. That is why it is so important to receive the double nanocapsules in a dry form. So why using nano spray dryer B90? Because it produces an aerosol of millions precisely side droplets due to ultrasonic vibrating technology without applying any pressure on the sample, which is important for our sensitive molecules. The heating is gentle and the flow is uniform laminar flow. This is unlike old spray dryer where, where the flow is non-laminar, usually turbulent, and it exposes the particles to differences in drying degree, leading to non-homogeneous particles in size and morphology. And even more important for my molecules, it exposes them to elevated temperatures that can cause the maturation of the oligonucleotide. That is why Bushy B90 is ideal for heat sensitive molecules. Moreover, the collection of the particles due to electrostatic field enables the collection of sub-micron charge particles as we desire. So the first part of my project focused on, tre on treating a Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is the most common inherited muscle disease in children and it's characterized by progressive muscle degradation and weakness. It is caught by mutation in dystrophin gene that leads to no functional dystrophin production. To date, there is no cure and the treatment is basically symptomatic and therefore many different therapies are under investigation. Exon skipping, what you can see in the figure here, is among the most promising strategies. Briefly, what you do is take antisense oligonucleotide that targets a specific exon and thereby causing its skipping. And ultimately, for our purposes, it leads to functional dystrophin production. Etta Plirsen <laughs> from Sarepta Therapeutics and an anti a antisense oligon based drug that leads to exon skipping. It was approved recently by the FDA for Duchenne. I spoke in the beginning about chemical modifications to the backbone. So this drug is using this technology without the delivery system. And therefore, as you can see written here, um, they use very, really high doses of up to 50 milligram per kilogram. But the approval was very controversial since it has been achieved without demonstrating significant clinical effect. So they still have to prove the clinical effect to the FDA and of course to show there are no serious toxicity, especially in the long term. Therefore, a delivery system is, is clearly still needed to improve uh, antisense oligonucleotide delivery for effective dystrophin production, for example, our double nanocapsule. So for my results um, that were achieved before the Bushy B90 upgrade, you can see the physical, the physical chemical properties of the primary particles on the left and more importantly, for this presentation, on the right, the double nanocapsules that were produced after spray drying with Bushy B90. You can see a median size of almost, where is it? Of almost 0.6 micron with very narrow size distribution and almost 50% yield. Here you can see that the double nanocapsules are very homogeneous in size and morphology, and that as we desired, 80% and sometimes even more of the double nanocapsule population were under one micron. So we went to a preliminary in vivo experiment with three MDX mice, which are Duchenne infected mice, where we want to skip their exon 23. They were injected with one milligram of double nanocapsules loaded with 15 micrograms antisense oligo twice a week for seven weeks, meaning each mouse was injected with only 30 micrograms of antisense oligo per week. In the Western blot here, you can see the dystrophin restoration, especially in quadriceps, 
and tibialis anterior muscles. That means that the antisense oligo retains it, its activity within the double nanocapsules after the, the spray drying process. Actually, quantitative evaluation demonstrated an expression of up to 0.46% of dystrophin compared to wild type, where we add with etapils and the approved drug, an expression of 0.45% was demonstrated. But with much higher doses of more than 1,000 fold more, we were able to achieve it only due to our double nanocapsules by using the Bushy V90. We are now analyzing the results for a large scale in vivo experiment we conducted. The second part of my project was with another hydrophilic macromolecule, siRNA. Here we wanted to downregulate HNRNPA2 protein, which are elevated in some cancers and help their acquisition of invasive character. In the table here, you can see the physical chemical properties we achieved. Here, the double nanocapsules were produced after the Bushy B90 upgrade. You can see we got much smaller median size of almost 0.4 micron with narrower size distribution, meaning more homogeneous particles in size, and even up to 21% of the double nanocapsule population were under one micron. The only downfall here were the yields, here would they were about 30%. Uh, in vitro activity evaluation for double nanocapsules loaded with siRNA didn't show down regulation of the HNRNPA2 protein, but it wasn't because of the spray drying, because when we evaluated the siRNA integrity after extracting it from the double nanocapsules, we evaluated it with gel electrophoresis, and you, you can see here, it maintained its structure since we received the same bands before and after extraction from the double nanocaps vitro transfection experiments. At the siRNA maintained its activity since we saw down regulation of the HNRNP A2 protein before and after its, its extraction from the double nanocaps. So my conclusion based on my experience with the Bushy B90 are that Bushy B90 was able to produce and collect submicron particles needed for systemic administration, that it is suitable for heat sensitive materials since in vivo and in vitro examination showed no loss in activity. The firm powder can be stored over prolonged time without activity loss. I checked it at least for two years. And um, the powder yields are relatively low, meaning it's suitable only for laboratory scale. Overall, we received all desired characters from our double nanocapsules by using the Buchi B90. Thank you. Okay. You press it. Yes. No, you continue. You continue. Okay. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Um, this is Kailash Petkar, and I'm presenting uh, on a platform technology developed in our lab. Uh, based on the solid nano and nanoparticles. And uh, as presented by Karin, um, she presented on the oligonucleotide and siRNA entrapment, whereas I'm going to present on the entrapment of protein um, and the feasibility of this uh, platform technology developed in a lab for the, um, uh, for the entrapped proteins activity um, for therapeutic purpose. So, um, you know, the proteins, they are uh, having 
various uh, drawbacks. The predominant drawback uh, includes its short short half life and uh, high molecular weight. And because of the short half life, of course, it needs frequent administration uh, by injection, and uh, which makes uh, very distressing for the patients. Um, and uh, because of that, it leads to non-compliance. Um, so normally they are injected, um, uh, they, are, they are prepared in an injectable formulation um, because there, uh, there is a problem of instability uh, in the oral route as well. So <clears throat> the long-acting injectable formulations in novel delivery system is needed because um, we know that encapsulation of protein uh, therapeutic molecules uh, within the polymer part particle is a well-established method for achieving the controlled release. However, um, there are certain challenges like um, low loading uh, efficiency, uh, poor encapsulation, and most of the time loss of protein activity. And that's the reason uh, it's quite difficult for the clinical translation of such um, uh, therapeutic um, such technologies. Uh, so um, there are various um, uh, various uh, attributes, but the critical attributes includes um, protein damage, as I uh, mentioned, loss of protein activity that may be because of denaturation, aggregation, or precipitation. And um, there are various uh, material attributes and process parameters. So <clears throat> therefore, we developed a nano in nano capsule that is a double nano capsule uh, technology to protect proteins uh, to elicit better protein stability while in the formulation preparation and um, as um, and its uh, in vivo efficiency as well because we know that most of the um, protein formulations uh, if you want to prepare long acting injectable protein formulations they are to be prepared by uh, different methodologies like double solvent uh, evaporation method, fetch separation method, and even the spray drying is there. However, uh, this all, all of these methods, they involve uh, different organic solvents, they involve high uh, shear stress and high temperature. So we we hypothesize that there will be uh, differences by entrapping um, protein molecules in the uh, double nanocapsules. So our hypothesis was um, preparation of uh, primary nanoparticles will help to internalize protein um, made up of um, uh, and this uh, primary nanoparticles will be made up of encapsulation of the this protein entrapped PNPs within a larger nanocarrier and we tried to uh, develop this uh, DNC these DNCs by using uh, nano spray drying B uh, bouquet B90 um, upgrade. <clears throat> so hypothesis is um, is that because of the double coating, there will be efficient uh, protection of the protein. Um, because uh, bouquet claims that B90 HP gives small size particles, and thus there will be. Uh, thus, we thought that it will be, uh, of course, uh, beneficial for the injectable particles. Uh, the, uh, so the protection of proteins will be in, uh, improved um, because of the double um, double encapsulation. There will be, of course, um, controlled release, and because of all this, there will be reduced frequency um, of the administration, and thereby there will be. Um, improved patient compliance. So we, uh, so our objectives of the uh, um, studies were to develop and optimize long-acting protein X injectable formulation uh, by double nano encapsulation technology using uh, B uh, Buki, uh, B90 HP, that is upgrade, and to investigate in vitro and in vivo performance of the uh, prepared formulation. So, so this is basically a uh, a platform technology and uh, we we want we wanted to um, um, identify the proof of concept whether it will be work uh, for the protein molecules or not so <clears throat> this is a methodology um, what we followed for the preparation of double nanocapsule as indicated here 
uh, we can see um, the primary nanoparticles were prepared by um, using human serum albumin and uh, thereafter these double nano capsules are uh, different formulations uh, we prepared different formulation by modulating the um, ratio of the pnps to polymer and um, we prepared um, <coughs> uh, we prepared double nano encapsulation uh, uh, double nano capsules by spray drying um, pnps um, dispersed into the uh, PLGA containing acetonitrile solution, and uh, we spray, as, as I said, we spray dried with the B90 HP uh, using um, um, parameters like uh, inlet temperature of uh, 80 degrees Celsius, uh, spray efficiency of 80, um, spray rate of 20, um, and uh, gas flow rate of 120 ml per. Uh, minute. So during the process of preparation of DNCs, we followed. Uh, we used a medium uh, nebulizer, as um, uh, suggested by the, um, uh, as indicated in the Aurelis presentation. So we used medium um, uh, nebulizer so as to achieve a particle size um, uh, below two uh, two micrometers, so that it will be um, convenient for an injectable uh, uh, injection, and uh, there will be reduced pain. Uh, because of the small uh, particles. Uh, so after preparation of uh, yeah. after preparation, um, we characterize the particles, and uh, here we can see some of the uh, physicochemical uh, parameters of the particles. Uh, th this includes uh, uh, we can see uh, the amount of pow powder which we collected during the preparation of. Um, uh, DNCs by using Buki B90 uh, HP. So, um, as as experienced in our lab, it is uh, indicated that, uh, and based on the um, ex um, our experience, it is uh, found that Buki B90 HP uh, helps to increase the yield efficiency. Uh, this we can see here. For example, we were able to achieve uh, almost 100 mg of powder in one batch uh, which is unlike to what we have seen in the uh, previous uh, bookie b90 um, these are the um, um, these are the um, scanning electron microscopy images and this is a particle size distribution so we can easily see that median uh, part median particle size was below two micrometer and uh, that was uh, desired particle size what we were expecting for the injectable formulation. Based on the SCM, we can easily see that the particles were uh, smooth, um, regular, and um, spherical in shape. And um, of course, they were uh, based on the particle size distribution. Most of the particles were below two micrometer. Uh, Apart from that, we have tried to identify, um, as I said, uh, uh, to determine whether our platform technology works or not. So we have tried to uh, identify whether PNPs have been incorporated inside the uh, double nano capsules. And we did this based by using cryo uh, uh, freeze fracture uh, SEM. And we can easily identify here in the bigger picture uh, that um, most of the PNPs, they are inside the double nano capsule, which is made up of uh, PLGA. And in, 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 in the last Im in the image, which is at the right hand side, which indicates so many particles uh, which have been cut down so as to um, uh, during the uh, freeze uh, fracture SEM can be easily seen here and they are with the PNPs. So, so the technology what we are using that shows uh, it works and it helps to uh, encapsulate um, macromolecules inside the PLGA particles. We have tried to uh, determine whether this protein is active or not and we have identified it based on the SDS space studies and we can easily identify, we can easily see uh, the um, protein uh, from the formulation from the double nano capsules and also from the uh, native protein, which was run in the SDS page, as shown in the lane three, four, five, and DNCs, which are which are seen, which can be seen easily here in the 
uh, lane six and uh, six, seven, and eight. Um, preliminary in vitro release studies they have indicated, um, although not so promising, but they have uh, shown us uh, a possibility of. Uh, um, uh, controlling the release of the uh, protein X from the DNCs, and uh, although they have shown, um, but, uh, although we have seen that the burst release was predominant in all of the most of the formulation, uh, we are trying to modulate the release. Uh, but yes, we can um, modulate and we can get the controlled release out of the DNCs with the protection of uh, protein uh, and trapping in the uh, double nanocapsules. So in conclusion, um, um, I can say that uh, what, uh, whatever the technology we are using that is solid nano in nanoparticle is a, uh, has shown a promising preliminary results. Uh, nano spray dryer, which we have uh, used, nano spray dryer Bookie B90HP, uh, has been able to produce small particles with increased, uh, increased air deficiency as compared to the previous Bookie B90. And thereby, we can uh, conclude that the small particles which can be uh, produced by the Bookie B90 HP uh, below two micron size uh, will definitely have a minimum minimum pain at injection side, and uh, that will give us a better patient compliance. So uh, this technology, um, we we think that this technology will be. Uh, 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 promising to produce small particles, uh, smaller particles to uh, have a better uh, re released um, release rate from the um, uh, formulations, and that will also help us to improve the pharmacokinetic pro profile. So, if if uh, if this technology is uh, proven, if we are able to prove this technology, then definitely we um, assume that it may revolutionize the therapy of uh, protein X in humans. Thank you very much. Okay. okay, I am now Simon Benita. I will try to summarize the both studies that have been presented by Karin and Kailash here. And uh, just for you to know that before them, there were also many other people working and developing this kind of nanotechnology and the names are here, and we already published a paper on this innovative nano-encapsulation. Oh, sorry. Now, uh, what I wanted to say here, that this technology is for us a very good contribution. We are working already more than 30 years on trying to improve the pharmacokinetic profiles of hydrophilic macromolecules, as here, uh, such as sRNA, oligonucleotides, peptides, and proteins. Unfortunately, most of the time we failed because nanotechnology cannot retain over prolonged time the in vitro release. So, there are still now things and there are drawbacks in most of the nano delivery systems that were used and some of them only also clinically and tested and marketed to fully exploit the therapeutic potential of these hydrophilic macromolecules we need still to address few issues like stability cellular uptake in the zonal escape and of course desired pharmacokinetics so there is still a lot of things to do. The current actual status of these long del nano delivery systems is there are many barriers that need to be overcome and only few products are approved in the market. Currently, there are some nano delivery systems under clinical evaluation, as you can see here and most of them are intended for systemic administration. Nevertheless, the most promising polymers that can be used in these systems are polyesters and mostly PLGA, as I decided here, and human serum algorithm. Both of them are already used in nano, not in nano delivery systems apart from the human serum algorithm. PLGA, we have many, many microspheres 
and microspheres are 1,000 size more than nanoparticles. So these products are in the market, however, not for intravenous injection. Human serum albumin has been successfully used and approved by FDA for human use, and this is already in the market for Abrexan, for example, and it is a very successful product in this case. Now, why the rationale of Dove Nano encapsulation? As I told you, we it's very difficult to sustain and retain over prolonged period of times actives encapsulated within nano delivery systems, either in liposomes, I am speaking about days and even weeks, or of course, macromolecules, and as per se. This is the first time after almost 30 years of attempt that we could see in this nanospray dryer, the previous nebulizer form 90 and the innovative and novel nebulizer system in the 90 HP, that it is possible to develop a potential injectable delivery system with improved therapeutic properties. How can you do it with these techniques? Firstly, you have to prepare, as made by many, many investigators, primary nanoparticles around 100 nanometers in size, and you cross-link the human cerebalbumin. And in this case, you can cross-link if you are encapsulating sRNA or oligonucleotides with glutaraldehyde, and this technique exists in the market. However, if you are encapsulating proteins and peptides, you cannot use glutaraldehyde because you will also cross-link your proteins and your peptides. But secondary nanoparticle that should be much higher than 100 nanometers, but less than one micron, is made from hydrophobic polymers, PLAG with different mole uh, molecular ways. What we are doing is the fourth application that already spoke about it. We are englobing the nano dispersion of the primary nanoparticles within, by this technique, in a nanoparticle made from hydrophobic polymers. And as you can see here, and you have been, and you saw it already, and we spoke about them. And this is what we have done, and it is clearly explained here. But why using nanospray dryer? In fact, for the first time, we could get an aerosol of millions of micro droplets small without applying any pressure on the sample by vibrating mesh head. We can effectively collect dry submicron particles via an electrical charge attraction. You people working in this area knows very well that it is relatively easy to prepare in a solution nanoparticles, but much more complicated to isolate these micro part nanoparticles within in a solid form by lyophilization or by any other technique that you want to use. Finally, we do believe that the nanospray dry represents a promising strategy approach for the development of innovative hydrophilic macromolecules delivery systems. And in the future, you will we will see more and more attempts and approaches in this area. Thank you for your attention, and we will be ready to answer any questions. Thank you very much. This is this is a good moment for uh, Q and A session. <clears throat> Let me show the questions that appear during the presentation. All right. Hi. Okay. So share the camera. Here we have, yeah, you can share the camera and uh, we can stay with uh, Aurelie as well because some first questions are for her. Okay. So Aurelie, if you can, if you can appear, if you can be with us.
Okay, let's go with the with the questions to Karen, and then maybe Aureli will just join us. Uh, so the first question is, let me. Okay, I see you are with us, and um, how about uh, your mic? Ready, great. Right, so Aureli, the, the question was about the applications in cosmetics. You see the question probably on the screen. Okay, so the question for the cosmetic, we don't have specific application for cosmetic at the moment. So, I mean, here in the lab, we didn't develop any cosmetic application node. However, there is a few application nodes that already exist that can be transferred for cosmetic. Uh, for example, we have uh, essential oil encapsulation or essential oil spray drying. And you will find all those uh, applications in our database on www.buhi.com. And I'm sure if you have a look closely into it, you will find something that can be transferred for cosmetic afterwards. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, another question was, what are the options to scale up from B90 HP to full-scale production? Or do you have an examples to that industry? That's so, true. for the moment, we know that scale-up is a bit of an issue. The only way to scale up the technology would be to put several machines in parallel. So, at the moment, with the current firmware we have on the machine, we could have a customer a customized solution with five spray head, but that's all we can offer at the moment. Uh, for the industry application, I don't really have any example. Maybe Simon has an idea or something, but from my side, I cannot answer to this part of the question. All right. Um, Simon, can you yeah, add something to that? Yeah. Uh, uh, in fact, you have to, uh, uh, for the yield, don't forget that we are not using a direct nanospray process. What we are doing first, we are preparing primary nanoparticles and we disperse these primary nanoparticles in an organic solvent and from this solvent where we dissolved the hydrophobic polymer, in this case PLAGA, we nebulize it in the nanospray dryer. The normal yields that we had, it's true that the yields are relatively low, but on the other side, we use different systems, different conditions, we could increase the yield up to 60-65%. We could not go more than 65, 70 maybe, in the best optimal conditions. What are the reasons? Probably we lose some of the nanoparticles on the, uh, in, the, in the column, and we do not collect all from, probably, from the uh, system, because it is an electrostatic electric system, and our best efforts are up to 70% yield from the total mass that we used in the beginning. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's something more. For sRNA, we have, this is the same question. And what I can say that the yield was improved with new device, the new nebulizer. And uh, the, uh, the reason I do not know. Uh, is a technical reason, probably already can answer it, but the new nebulizer is able to produce now up to 70% when using the medium size filter. And this is what we have done. Now, for the production, it's just for a lab, yes. In fact, we can produce more quantities. What we have done, we have produced for the animal study now, to have enough to inject to many groups, we were we needed to prepare altogether about 20 batches. So, uh, for the time being, we do not have the innovative or the five head that uh, already said, but probably it will improve the amount produced per batch we can go more than 100 milligrams. Uh, this is the limit, <clears throat> the limitation of this technology. It is still encouraging. 
and I do believe that Bushi will know how to overcome this limitation and in the future we will propose much more effective and larger machines and uh, we will do better. But this is what we have and we are pleased at least to make a proof of concept. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to make a short uh, short break in this Q&A session and uh, start the uh, call. Okay, let's another question about acetonitrate. Acetonitrate was the best for our production. Yeah, okay. it was the best. Uh, we, we tried different solvents and acetonitrate was the best solvent. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Acetonitrile was um, giving a proper uh, spray, uh, whereas uh, in case of other solvents, um, there was found to be a crustification at the spray head yeah. and uh, the crustification which continued with the spray and that led to the blockade of the uh, nebulizer. So that's the reason we have selected acetonitrile. All right. Thank you very much. I see that we have uh, some more questions, but uh, we do not have time to, to answer all. But of course, we uh, we have an emails from everybody who asked the questions and we will answer the questions directly to the people who asked the questions. But before we finish, before we wrap up to today's webinar, I would like you to to answer some some questions. It's going to be like uh, two minutes questions. So uh, now I start uh, the poll, and this is uh, this is the ask for everybody for, for asking the the questions you see on your screen now. I see the progress. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, that, that is actually the second part of, the, of, the, of that question. So please, please answer again. Thank you very much. I also see the progress in the in this question. Thanks for your answers. Great, thanks. I will close that and um, And this is also a question about particle size range. How is it in your case?
okay we also have some answers thank you very much and another question uh, the answers are necessary and, and helpful for us to know where to promote the webinar to the other webinars to to get to know how to reach the audience Thank you, I see some answers. And last two questions. Thank you very much. And this is last question from our poll. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we can show up at the end and just, just to say goodbye for everybody. Thank you very much uh, for, the, for your attendance. Uh, as I said, all the questions that uh, has been put by you into the question box will answer by email. Dear presenters, if you want to show up and say goodbye, this is the right moment. So you can start your camera. Professor Benita, can you show up? Okay, we we'll see you. Please start your microphone. Please start your microphone because we do not hear you. That's great. That's right. Thank you very much for the I presentation. Do you want to say thank some you words very much at the end?
it's a very nice uh, experiment for us and I am sure that the next time we will improve and do better. Even. Thank you very much. Thanks for the well, presentation. Well, thank you everybody for attending. Oh, really, okay. if you want to say something, that's that's a good moment. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much for attend, attending the webinar. I hope it was useful for you and that you learned interesting new stuff. And we're looking forward to seeing you to the next one, hopefully. So thanks, everybody. Thank you, Professor Benita. Thank, thank you, you, Patrick. Thank you, Professor thank Benita. You. Uh, thank, thank you, Kalyash. Bye-bye. Thank you, Karin. Thanks, Aureli. Uh, we hope to see you soon in another webinar. Uh, have a great uh, end of the weekend. Have a great weekend. Sorry, hey, have a great end of the weekend and good weekend. Uh, and I hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. End webinar.